Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part 23 of my fitness database series. Today we're going to start the food log table. If you haven't watched parts 1 through 22 now, we've got a lot of them. Go watch all those first, then come on back. And again, this happens to be a fitness database, but the stuff I'm teaching is valid for any kind of a database that you might be building, and there's lots of cool stuff in it. So let's get to it. It is finally time to build the food log table. This will be when you eat something throughout the day, you're going to take the food item and you're going to put it on your log. And if you want, you can take a whole meal and say, okay, it's time for Rick's breakfast. Do this, add it to the food log, right? That's what we've been building this up for is to actually track this stuff. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. There's the fully relational model. And then there's the snapshot model. And then there's a hybrid approach, which is actually what we're gonna be doing. But let me give you the details on each of those. So when you build a database like this, all right, let, let, let's, let's consider like the tech help free template, the, the customer order model, right? If you've got customers and the customers place orders and those orders have products on them, okay? And you want to pick the products from a list of products that you have. Okay, hard drive, monitor, keyboard, whatever. Let's say you're selling computers, okay? Now, you've got a product table, which is one of the things I build in my full course. We didn't do that in the tech help video, but normally you'd have a product table where you could pick products from, just like we're picking food items, right? But those products might change slightly throughout you know, their usage, especially their price. The price is going to fluctuate up and down. And you don't want to have to create a brand new food or a pump. I got food on the mind. You don't want to have to create a brand new product item in your product table just because the price went up. Right? So if you do a fully relational model where you, you know, in each customer's order, you just copy the product ID. Well, then you got to create a whole new product if the price changes because you're getting all the information from the product table directly. Okay. The snapshot model says we're going to take that product information and copy all of that product information to the order table, the order detail table, technically. Okay, but you lose your your link to the the actual product. So if you do have to go and like, you know, give me a list of all the customers who purchased this product, you don't have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a hybrid approach. We're going to cop. We're going to keep the IDs but we are going to copy over most of that information into the food log. Once in a while, you may hear that little sound, that little sound right there. And that's because I've got uh, whisper. Whisper pro is the voice recognition software that I use. And I've got a, a stream deck here. And every now and then when I'm recording, instead of hitting the hot key to stop recording, I hit the whisper pro thing and it starts voice recognition. So that's, that's why once in a while, if you hear that noise, that's what that is. That's me. I goofed. <laughs> I don't feel like going back and editing that last video because it was a few minutes. <laughs> All right. Anyways, getting back to it with food tracking, um, the calories in a chicken breast are not going to just suddenly change overnight. Right. But you may want to make a modification to it on the fly. Right. You might want to change. You know, maybe maybe you added a little butter to it. You don't feel like putting, you know, a whole new entry in for butter. Or maybe you were wrong. Maybe you did enter it wrong and you found a new source and says, oh, hey, no, there's actually this many calories. So you might want to be able to go back and change them all. So by keeping the IDs, you can at least pull up a query and say, hey, this item is used in these, in these food log items, right? But you don't necessarily have to change them all, right? So this, this method, the hybrid method, it's good if you want to just manually you know, uh, change an item on the fly. But it's also good if you want to go back and fix a mistake and need to find all the older items. So I, that's why I like to store both. It, it seems like it's not a very important detail right now, but later on, as you get to use it, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see the benefits of this. I teach the hybrid method in my full course when we do the product entry system. We copy the product over, we keep the product ID in the table, but we also copy up the information too. So you're, so you're getting some cooler stuff that I cover in my expert lessons. See, I told you there'd be benefits to stick in with a, a 20, what, 23 part series. Now it's going oh, to be longer, folks. 
All right, so of what we have in our database right now, oh, someone's beaming in, hang on a second. I think the food table itself, and one thing I wanna change, we're gonna get rid of this little plus over here. Um, the food table itself has most of the fields we need for the food log. Uh, we're gonna keep a lot of the same stuff, so we're gonna be doing some copying and pasting here. One thing I wanna change though, go into the properties of the table. Now, when you turn on relationships, you get this thing here, sub data sheet name, right? I want none because there's nothing under food tea. And I think that's annoying because it's it, it was showing meal tea because they are linked, but not in the way that I want to see meal items on this table. And again, uh, tables are just for you. Don't let your users ever in your tables, period. Okay, so let's create our table. This is going to be the food log table. So food log ID, I always do that. I always put a T there when there shouldn't be. Let's save it right away. Food log T, get that out of the way. Yes, there it is, okay. Now I'm gonna add a user ID, even though we don't have this yet. That's our foreign key, because we, we got to build a user table, but for now, we're gonna stick that in there. And I'm gonna default all these records to one, just for now, for you, all right? I like to keep all my IDs up top. So the only other ID we have to worry about here is a food ID. Do we save the meal ID? No, I'm not gonna save individual meals. Although we are gonna copy over the meal description for grouping purposes. We'll talk about that later. But I don't care about the meal ID. All I'm gonna do is when they pick a meal, I'm gonna grab the food items in that meal and throw them in the log. Okay, you'll see how it'll work. I do wanna track the date and time it was added to the log. So let's call this food date time. That'll be a date time, and I'm gonna default it to now. Do I call this just date? No, do I call it just date time? No, you can call it my date time. Why, those are reserved words, we don't use those, right? I don't think we have any other dates in here. There's no dates in any of these tables, right? I don't mean the dates that you eat, <laughs> or the dates that you go on. I'm talking about the actual date. Now, you can use this for planning purposes, so you could put a future date time in here if you want to, but basically the food log, we're gonna break it down so on the form you see all of one day's food items, right? All of today, all of yesterday, you wanna plan tomorrow, that's fine too, because we're gonna have another field in here called has eaten, right? That's a yes, no value, default to no. So have you actually consumed that yet? And then on the bottom in the totals, we'll say, here's what you've got planned for the day, Here's what you've actually eaten so far, right? So I, I do this myself too, because I like to plan out the day. And I know that I've got like a 450 calorie uh, uh, yogurt and fruit bowl coming up at the end of the day, because I look forward to that every night. And so if I'm at, you know, if my goal for the day is 2000 calories and I'm already at 1700, I gotta make some adjustments. I can see what I've already eaten and what I have planned for that day. So that helps. All right, next is going to be the quantity. Now here's where it's gonna get a little weird. And for quantity, we're gonna make the type down here double. Remember, there's either long integer or double. I only use those two types. Long integers for uh, integers, right? Counting numbers. And doubles for anything that needs a fractional component. And you might have, you might eat 1.5 eggs, for example, okay? And you don't wanna go in there and figure it out by ounce or blah, blah, blah. We'll make the default for that one. Now, we're going to keep the quantity so we know how many, obviously, you've eaten. And we're gonna keep all of the, uh, the macro values that we are gonna copy into this table, we're gonna keep those per unit macro values. Okay, so not to confuse everybody. So the log will do the math for you, but I'm gonna copy over the macro values from the food table as per unit. We'll get to that in a second. Now, I'm, I'm gonna do all the fields we're gonna copy from the food table last. So let's do all the things here so far that are for just this table. All right, I'm gonna do um, log notes. Actually, let's just make this just notes. Because we are gonna copy over the food notes. I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm gonna copy the meal notes. But the food notes might be not, might be necessary. So you got notes like grilled or whatever, you know, whatever little notes you want with that food item. All right, this is long text. This will be notes for the log item. So you can put in there, you know, uh, 
I don't know, grill, grilled these with barbecue sauce or something. And that's why you adjusted the calories or something like that. Yeah, let's let's make this food log notes so we don't get confused because we're going to have another notes field in here. Okay. Now, from the food table, we are going to copy over the description. I also am going to copy over the meal description, too, if there is one, because later on when we do a report, when we make a printed report, we can then group by the meal description. All right, so if you do copy over a meal, you can put all of the items under Rick's breakfast, for example. Okay, so I'm going to copy over the meal description and the food description. So we've got both of those. Okay. Now, let's save this. We're going to copy over the macros and the other details from the food table. So let's go the, into here, the design view of the food table. Let's see what we're going to copy. I'm going to do a little bit of this. Do a little side-by-side -side action. All right. Whoops, I just accidentally maximized it. Okay. That's why I don't understand how some people work in this mode, right, with the tabbed interface across the top. I think this is the most annoying thing. I like Windows. It's called Windows, people. It's not called tabs. Anyways. All right, do we need to copy the food group ID? No, I think this is one of those instance where, instances where you're not gonna change this on the fly. So if you really need to know the food group, you can get it relationally, that's fine. Just like the URL, I don't really think we need to copy that over. So description, we've already got a field for that. Calories through protein, we're gonna copy those. So copy and paste right over here. Okay, now I'm gonna add per unit to each of these. Okay, calories per unit, fat, carb, fiber, sugar, added, protein. Just so no one's confused, we're gonna have a little pop-up form they have to do to edit this stuff. Because I don't want them thinking, okay, I typed in five for a quantity and thinking these should change. So there's, there's calories per unit is 100 and you've got five of those, so the total, on the form will show 500. Okay, this doesn't have a unit over here. You don't put a, a number in this. This is just one item. So whatever the serving size is, you know, if it's one egg or if it's six ounces of chicken, whatever that item unit is, that's what we're gonna be over here per unit. All right, one gives you that. Just so there's no confusion, okay? Save it, close it, close it. And now we're start ready. Now we're start ready. <laughs> what does that mean? Now we are ready to start building the form and we will tackle that. Let's see. Today is Thursday, the 14th of August, 2025. Tomorrow's going to be a quick, quick queries Friday, man. I can't talk today. So we will start building the form for this on Monday, the 18th. So that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, 
Plus, you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.